Hello and welcome to another walkthrough for Postgres for everybody. On this walkthrough we're going to download some text from uh, Project Gutenberg which is a, you know me, I love free and open source things. Uh, Gutenberg is a free ebook, uh, things that are out of copyright and uh, you can um, get a full text. Um, I usually just go to the um, top 100 books if I'm trying to make an assignment for this class and then pick something uh, modest proposal by Jonathan Swift and then take the plain text and then here you go and then if we did this before in the JSON assignment where we were putting in a database we try to pull out the paragraphs and then just insert the paragraphs throw away things that are too short or look like they're all punctuation or whatever now we get there's stuff in this that is got that about Gutenberg <laughs> that's going to show up as a paragraph it'll be okay you could be more sophisticated about this you could maybe look for this and throw everything away but I'm not going to build that so let's take a look at the code um, the code is in elasticbook.py and again you got to set up your credentials we're going to use the Elasticsearch client to save a little bit of effort on our part and um, so we're just gonna read the book open the book read the book open an Elasticsearch connection from the hidden secrets um, we're gonna drop the data drop the index which is basically like a drop database or drop table depending on how you think of it um, we're gonna set up mappings the only difference in this mapping is the content field is going to be text type which means in effect spaces are thought of as important and we're going to use the language English and Elasticsearch comes pre-built with lots of different languages uh, and it's quite nice and then we send the body settings in to create the index and then we loop through you know and we're we're just looking for blank lines and we're all concat I'm also stripping out all new lines so that each paragraph is just like one long string not not a string that's uh, that's justified by sticking new lines in it. Um, and then at some point I notice I find myself a blank, blank line and I increase my paragraph count and then I create a document to put in where the content is the actual text and I have this paragraph counter. Now then I'm going to add, add this document uh, in document type paragraph, throw the document in, but I want to talk a little bit about the primary key strategy and um, just like in the other other thing, I, you know, every I just sleep every hundred inserts. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. And the first way I wrote it was I just used that paragraph count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's fine. Uh, primary keys can be integers. Um, another very common thing is to use a globally unique identifier, a GUID. And this UID library in Python UID4 will generate every time you hit it, it'll give you a different GUID and they will be random. And if you ran, if you're doing multiple writers that are a thousand writers all blasting into this at the same time, like say ELK, the log stash um, a thing where you got like 40 logs just firing away, you're, if you want a primary key, you might as well just use a UID, especially if the primary key has the, 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 it's just a record, like appending a record, um, just make it. And what's cool about this is this is not something that's being done in the database. This is something that's being done in our Python code. And so, you know, there's hundreds of simultaneous copies of this Python code running at the same time, and they're all generating primary keys that are distinct and unique and fine. Um, and then these documents are just sort of streaming into this database, but the primary key is created in the client, in the Python code, not in the database. And that that's basically your base idea, right? Don't use ID serial, use primary key GUID, which is really crazy. But from a relational, you wouldn't really want to do this too much. Although sometimes you will put an extra field in more of a logical key that's a GUID um, if you're starting to use multi-tenants things and move stuff around. So GUIDs are great. There are lots of, lots of uses for them, but I'm choosing not to do that. So what I'm doing instead, this is a bit of code, is I am computing a SHA-256, and not a SHA-1, 256 times better than a SHA-1. We're going to do a SHA-256 of the entire document. And so the entire document, of course, is this. This is a dictionary. And I'm going to 
basically dump it to a string using the JSON library, which just kind of shoves it all together with double quotes. I'm doing a SHA-1. SHA it doesn't really matter how pretty it is. It just matters that it does the same thing over and over. And of course, I have to com convert it to UTF-8 because um, this gives me back a Unicode. Um, Python gives me back a Unicode string, which is a Python string. But if I'm going to sort of talk to it in the real world, I've got to do an encode to drop it down into UTF-8. An M update basically is to read through this string and kind of update the digest and then give me back a hex version of the digest. And that's the primary key that I am going to use. And the rest of it's pretty straightforward. I do tell it once I've loaded it, I refresh the index, tell how far it went, and then I have a query string. That is um, whatever the search value that I, I can do a search term, and then it prints out this deep copy. Um, I, I don't want to show all the results because it makes my UI look yucky, and so I wanted to delete the actual hits and show only the metadata about the search in this print statement. But you have to use a thing called deep copy because if you just copy a dictionary, the all the lower level things that dictionary within dictionary within dictionary. They're not all copied unless you do a deep copy. Um, and so you can you can go look up how deep copies work. And it's just so that when I delete this from the summary, it doesn't actually delete it from res. So I need res to exist so I can loop through all of the hits. Um, so. so let's go ahead and uh, run this. Go back up to the top here. Uh, let's see, what do I got? TG18 text. What is this? This is Scientific American. So it's uh, some Scientific American from 1879. Okay, so let's go ahead and run Python 3, Elastic Book. Okay, now before I do this, I'm going to go over here and in another window run Python 3, Elastic Tool, which is our my little helper. Um, and and before this starts, I'm going to actually just go ahead and delete PG18866. And so now that actually, I mean, the first thing this code would have done is deleted it, but now you can see that I can also delete it from here. We have two clients. This is going to be one client. And I'm just going to hit enter so that it reads this one file from my local drive, this file right here from my local drive, and out it comes. But watch this. I can keep like hitting enter here. And you can see it's got 44 documents, 100 documents, 117 documents, 168 documents. So it's it's no, it's adding them here, but we can see them there. If I want to type, if I want to look at how the documents are going in, I can see match all gg18866. And so you see the documents that are going in. Um, let's go find a real paragraph. Here we go. Right. So we see a couple of things here, right? We see which index it's in, what document type it is. We see that it's this is the ID. This is the SHA-256 of the actual content, which is really this data right here. It's different because there's no spaces. It's not pretty printed, but it is it is affected by the offset and the text, right? And so that's the GUID that I produced. And then the offset, that's paragraph 93. And then here is the actual paragraph itself. Okay, and so that's what these things look like. It's still, oh, it's cruising along. Okay, so we can, in, in this code, so let me, let me, I forgot to tell you. Um, and so, yeah. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. I want to show you, talk about this. So even though what I'm doing here is not a multi-writer, meaning I'm only running one copy of this, um, because the GUI, there, there is a uniqueness constraint sort of in, in the index based on the primary key or the ID. If I put the, another document in, it's going to, with the same primary key, it's going to overwrite it. And so imagine, that I'm not actually just I'm dropping this every time, so it's not, you can play with this by not dropping. I'll comment this dropping part out. You could re, you could run this over and over and over, and it would actually replace these documents. 
right? Because the primary key that's un unless the con unless the offset or the text change, this primary key is going to be the same. Which means that this index, go back up. This statement right here, this index is actually going to be an insert on conflict update, right? So um, let me put a comment in there to that effect because the P key is um, based only eh, on document contents. This is in effect insert on conflict update. So, yeah, right, I can't type. Insert on conflict update. Yeah, yeah, I can't even type document. on the end of the line or GitHub will be mad at me. Okay, because this primary key is, is directly based on the document contents, this in effect is an insert um, in a conflict update. And that's because this primary key would be recomputed. If I was inserting this paragraph at position 93 again, it would actually overwrite it rather than just keep adding the copies of it. So that's why I kind of came down on ultimately using this hex digest. Even though this isn't a multi-writer situation, I want to demonstrate how you think, the, the, just the thought process of how to even use the primary key. You got to figure it out and you got to know it in advance and you got to decide, is this a multi-writer situation? What am I using this primary key? Um, this doesn't give me much good to look up, but I could use this one. If I use the integer primary key, I could say, I could use a get, and I could say, get me number 42, and then I would get paragraph 42. So you can do things now. Of course, I could also then index this offset p count, and I could do a get. I could do a search based on p count, so I could look that thing up, and it'd probably be scorchingly fast. So, oh lord. So it just, there's a lot of things to think about when you're dealing with a base style uh, document, and the even if this was like an insert on conflict, if I was doing this twice with the same primary key, again, it's a, it's, it, it is an eventual consistency. So version one, you might see version one and, and some readers might see version one and some readers might see version two. Uh, usually there's a version somewhere in this place. No, I'm not seeing the version, but it, you know, there might be updates. Okay, enough about the primary key. It is kind of a fun thing to think about. Um, and so let's see which what, what's in here. Let's look up Spain. So I've got a nice little search loop at the bottom. Of this I got a search loop that's going to do a query string from on the on the content field. And so let's just demonstrate that Spain. Boop. And so so here's the search results. Um, we got twelve hits. The, it gives us a score. <laughs> There's not a lot of order by, there's not a lot of order by in um, in index. It's not like uh, it wants to do order by this is not its favorite thing to do. Um, it tends to want to do it by rank, by uh, you know match rank. It doesn't really want to give it to you in order. That's why you want to think about this this um, uh, base stuff as you're getting one document. Don't think of it as you're getting a set of documents. Not that you can't do it, but it's not a relational system. And this, this sort of kind of gets the sense of when you might say, oh, I like order by. And would you add order by to a, a no SQL or an, a base style, or would you just go ahead and use Postgres, which is really good at order by. So uh, <laughs> it's funny. It, no, it seems like no matter where I go, there's always philosophy in this acid versus base discussion. So I, I look forward to hearing what your philosophy is uh, when we talk online. Cheers.